what we're going to be looking at here is impairment of long-term assets. Now, these assets either can be held for use in the future or they can be intended to be disposed of here. And we're going to be looking at the example here where we have impairment of assets where they're intended to be disposed of here. So what we're given here for our example here is we have equipment here on 123120X1 which is held for disposal here and we have an equipment cost of 18000 on it, accumulated depreciation of 2000 So uh, we, our book value here is just a difference. Our book value or our carrying value here would be 16 thousand and then what we had to determine here which we were given here would be the future net cash flows of this asset and that were given to be fourteen thousand here and then also the fair value had to be determined on that asset or its market value here and that was determined to be eighty eight hundred dollars so what we've had here we've had some significant changes so we have to do this recoverability test here so we're this is where it's going to fail this recoverability test so how you do that here you take the future net cash flows of this asset here and if they're less than the carrying value of the asset then you're going to have a failure of this recoverability test. So our future net cash flows here were to be 14000 and it's less than the carrying value here the book value of $16,000. So now we know we have an impairment loss here. So to calculate our impairment loss all we do is take the book value of the carrying value here of the asset of $16,000 and we would subtract the or compare it to the fair value or subtract our fair value of it here of $8,800. And this is where we have to, in this case, we're going to have a disposal cost on this asset here to dispose of it here. So we'd have to add that here to our total amount here. So we have a, we'd add our $400 of our disposal cost here. And the total amount here would be our impairment loss here. The book value of $16,000 less the fair value of $8,800 plus our disposal cost of $4,000 gives us an impairment loss here of $7,600. And this is what we'd be recording here in 1231-20x1 here. So just going back to our example here, our loss on impairment again, it's the $16,000 book value less the $8,800 fair value or market value at plus we add our disposal cost here. So that gives us this loss on impairment here of $7,600. Now normally we, in this case, we are, we would go and we'd recalculate our depreciation here. But in the case here where these assets are held for disposal that is we're going to dispose of them in the future here we intend to dispose of them we would not have any depreciation so we don't go and we we would have no depreciation on this asset here that's being held for disposal here now let's look at the case here where the equipment was not sold here on 1231-20x2 as we uh, and up uh, anticipated. We we're going to sell it here in year 20x2, but uh, we didn't. We didn't sell it here. And in this, and we also uh, reassessed it here that it has a fair value now of $10,200. So what we would do here is um, we're going to actually calcula calculate a loss recovery in this case here since the equipment was not sold. So to do that here, uh, what we would have to do is let's look at here our uh, first look at our uh, equipment cost here. We had equipment cost of 18000 accumulated depreciation of $2,000. Uh, we'd be subtracting that here. And then we the impairment loss here on 20x1 that we had calculated of 7600 that would also have to be a uh, subtracted from our equipment cost. So subtracting our accumulated depreciation and an impairment loss here in 20x1, we come up with a carrying value here of um, of $8,400 here uh, now for 20x2 here. So let's go over here and look at our calculations. So we take the fair value here at 20x2 of $10,200. Now we would have to subtract our disposal cost here that we had of $400 and then our to subtotal amount here would be $9,800. Now we take the uh, compare our carrying value here at 20x2 to our um, amount here of, of our fair value less our disposal cost here of $9,800 and we're going to see that we have a recovery here of $1,400. So our carrying value here, $8,400 or $8,400 is less than uh, the fair value, less the disposal. So we have a loss on our recover, our recovery loss here. And this, we would do this, we'd reevaluate this asset each period here. So let's go and look at how we'd record that here. So first for our accumulated depreciation on our balance sheet here, uh, we uh, would have uh, credited that here 
for $7,600. Now that was this impairment loss here in 1231X1. And then the debit amount here would be going to an impairment loss on our income statement uh, for $7,600. So accumulated depreciation credited for $7,600. Impairment loss debited here for $7,600. That's for that 1231X1 impairment loss. Now we come along here and we revalued this uh, asset here for 1231X2 and we determined that it has a recovery loss here of $1,400. So uh, we would debit or reduce our accumulated depreciation here by $1,400 and then the credit amount here would go to uh, reduce our impairment loss here on our income statement by $1,400. So uh, that was here for 1231X2 where we reevaluated this equipment only because it wasn't sold here. It was intended to be sold here but it wasn't sold. So this is where we would have a experience a loss recovery. Now Again, there would be no depreciation for the assets held here for disposal. So we wouldn't have calculated or included any depreciation, even though we had this uh, recovery loss here. And just remember, we'd revaluate this each period here. Okay, now let's go up and just summarize what we've done here. So first here for our steps to determine whether there is an impairment. Number one here, we have to review events or changes in the circumstances for possible impairment and those would have to be significant changes. There's a number of items that we could be going through here but we won't in this case but there are any significant change here. Number two here for a step perform this recoverability test so if the sum of the expected future cash flows undiscounted again is less than the carrying amount of the asset then uh, what you would do here you'd have to look here at these it fails the test here so uh, this is the, where our future net cash where we can we have to uh, perform this in uh, recoverability test. So A here, if it fails the test, that's where the future net cash flows would be less than the carrying value here. Then you would be recognized in an impairment loss here. And B, uh, there would be no impairment here if the future net cash flows are greater than the carrying value here. And then number three here, if the recoverability uh, test indicates that an impairment has occurred and then a loss is computed and this is how we do that. We have this impairment loss is the amount by which the carrying amount exceeds the fair value here. So if the fair value is measured based and again the fair value is based on the market value and if no active market exists then use the present value of the expected future cash flows to determine any fair value here. Uh, normally all we did is we take uh, we would take the undisclosed counted cash flows but if there was no market value then you'd have to discount them back here to their present value. And again our impairment loss always be used as carrying value less the fair value here would be any impairment loss of uh, our fair value here is less than our carrying value then we have an impairment loss. Now impairment of assets to be disposed of and let's look at it here number one uh, the assets are held for disposable are like inventory report them at the lower of cost or net realizable value less any disposable cost a disposal cost here do not depreciate or amortize the assets held for disposal during the period which it holds them number two you can write up or down an asset held for disposal in the future periods as long as the carrying value after the write-up never exceeds the carrying amount of the asset before the impairment here and continually reevaluate them reevaluate them each period and uh, and you will recover assets instead you recover these assets through the sale rather than to through operations here and then report losses or gains of these impaired assets as part of income from continuing operations not as extraordinary losses here. So all we've done is we've gone through this a basic example here looking at the impairment of an asset here uh, what was intended for disposable and then if uh, we uh, was determined that it was not sold and it had a change here in its fair value then we had to go and revalue it and determine when we have, if we had any loss recovery. So that takes care of our basic example.